Sydney Kelly, um, and this is my good friend Gertie the Shark here. Um, and today we're going to talk about the different activities we have for guests to interact with and learn from um, during Shark Week. So this is uh, this is an activity um, all about uh, buoyancy. So have you ever wondered why sharks and fish how they're able to like stay afloat while they're swimming, stay afloat in the ocean? So we're going to talk about that today. Um, so, red snapper fish, um, other bony fishes, they're able to um, stay floating because, because they have what's called a swim lap. So, this bottle here, we're going to say it's our fish. Um, and Gertie's helping me out here demonstrate. So, do you think it's going to float or sink? Float. Float? Okay. So, <laughs> so yes, it does float. Um, this swim bladder. Um, so fish have to either pump in air um, or let air out to either, you know, swim up or swim down. But they have to be very careful because their swim bladder um, could rupture if they swim too fast, like up or down in the ocean. Um, so uh, next, so your question is about sharks. Um, so why do you, do you think sharks have a swim bladder? Do you think they have something different? Something different. Something different? Okay, okay. So this bottle here is our shark. Gary's going to have to be real careful with that one. So sharks do not have a swim bladder. Um, they have um, their liver, which is really, really big. You can see it here. It can take up, um, in some sharks, up to 25% of their body mass. And it is full of oil, and oil called squalene. Can y'all say squalene? It's a funny word. Swallowing, yes. So do you think the shark, our shark is going to swim or like, is it going to float or sink? What do you sink. Sink. Ah, uh, let's see. It's up. It's kind of floating. Not as well as our fish, but this is a demonstration. So because sharks don't have a swim bladder, they are able to swim at high depths or low depths as fast as they want after prey. Um, they're not as susceptible to diseases like fish are. Um, and we'll just say, we'll let Gertie do this one too. This is our control. So if sharks or fish had neither an oily liver or swim bladder, um, unfortunately, right? <laughs> they would sink. So just to reiterate, our fish, bony fish have what, a swim bladder, and that's how they float, and sharks have an oily liver, and that is how they float. Now we're gonna talk about why sharks are important to our ecosystem. Some sharks are apex predators, meaning they have no natural predators in the ocean, and they're at the top of the food chain. Through their hunting habits, sharks affect every single layer of the food web, whether directly or indirectly. So this activity here is basically just going to show how important sharks are to our ecosystem. Thank you, Gertie. Now, sharks are important because they preserve seagrass meadows. Uh, this is an important habitat for fish species, uh, and they preserve these meadows by intimidating the predators of grass, which are just turtles. And this helps prevent overgrazing of these meadows. Um, sharks also protect coral reefs. Um, by reducing the number of prey um, that feed on herbivorous fish, which are just plant-eating fish. Um, and these plant-eating fish are very, very important because they help keep coral reefs in check so they don't overgrow. Sharks themselves just day to day eat fish that could be weak or sick, any size of fish, and this helps to preserve the diversity of species within the ocean. And lastly, this is really cool because sharks preserve seagrass meadows, like I said before. Um, seagrass absorbs carbon emissions, but sharks can also store carbon in their bodies. Um, and this helps to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases that are released into our atmosphere. So, let's see. What would happen if sharks completely disappeared from our ecosystem, say, due to overhunting? I don't know, Bernie. Can you show us what would happen? Oh no! The whole ecosystem collapsed. 
And that's how sharks are important. 